Hey y'all, my name is JT Nesbitt. I want to welcome you to the Curtis Design Studio in New Orleans. We're going to go over uh, today the new for 2021 Curtis One motorcycle. And what I'd like to do is show you a few of the features on the bike regarding suspension, chassis construction, battery, and the way we've done our axle shaft and drive. So if you wouldn't mind giving me a few moments of your time, I think we're going to have a lot of fun. I think that this is the most interesting motorcycle uh, in the 21st century. And when I say motorcycle, I don't just mean EVs. Because the fact that this is powered by electricity has always been secondary to building the most amazing motorcycle that we possibly could. So come on in and join me. Let's look at some stuff. So our motorcycle is the very first motorcycle to have adjustable rig. And if you look right here, you'll see a series of bolts and two numbers, 31 and 27. These are the static, available static rig angles for this motorcycle. And you can see that we're in the 31 degree position. So these, the holes clock depending on where the steering neck is set up. Think of this as kind of like a giant hinge. If you have adjustable rig, you must also have adjustable trail. So this is our trail adjuster. And if you notice, this one is set up at 27 degrees. That's where that number is. So in the 27 degree rig position, we have four and a half inches of trail available to three and a half inches of trail with this block out screw. Now this bike is set up in the 20, in the, in the 31 degree rake position. So to configure our trail settings for our rake setting, what we do is pull this safety block out screw and put it in the 31 degree position. Now in the 31 degree position, we have an available four and a half inches of trail to three and a half inches of trail via this eccentric and needle bearing. In the rear of the motorcycle, this same part is used more or less the same part is used for our belt tension adjustment. Let's have a look at our chassis. What we have is a chassis that consists primarily of two structural uh, machined 6000 series aluminum plates. And you'll notice all these uh, ribs in here, these are to lighten it and add strength. We also have the option of putting uh, color, texture, and material inside these pockets. In the front, these two plates are held together with the steering neck and this great looking grill, right, which is an air intake, but it's also a structural part. Uh, let's have a look at one of these plates. Let me pull one off for you. Nice and light, super, super strong. So let's have a look at the suspension on this motorcycle. It's unlike anything else out there. We actually are using girder blades in multiple locations. So if you look at this multi-link style front suspension and the suspension member, it's exactly the same as the rear suspension member. And not only that, it's part number one, quantity four. So there's no difference between this part left and right or front and rear. Now we're showing carbon fiber girder blades on this bike, that's optional equipment. We should have our carbon fiber blades offered in summer 2021. The initial launch bike will have a, an aluminum girder. 
These are early prototypes. The adjustable rig feature of this motorcycle, with the ability to adjust the trail to compensate, creates uh, a problem. And that is that your ride height also changes dramatically. To be able to compensate for ride height adjust, we have this, a push rod style rear suspension. What this will do is adjust the swing arm angle and ground clearance. So with all the ability to adjust the ride height and ground clearance of this motorcycle, we also have to be able to compensate that with our stands, kickstand, center stand. Here's the kickstand of the ride. And it's quite clever, actually. If you notice, it's a compression spring with a cam follower, and this is the cam, right? Here is our kickstand adjuster and locking screw. And if you notice, the foot is actually able to articulate as well. So this will compensate for any, any angle, depending on where you have your kickstand set up. The center stands have to be able to be adjusted as well, right? And you'll notice that we have two bolts here with a sliding foot that slides up and down to compensate for any ride height our customer desires. Now, one of the special features about these stands is, as you can see, this part is exactly the same as this part. Part number one, quantity three, center stand, and case stand. Let's have a look at our drive system. And it's based on this shaft. If you look at our axial flux motor, which has a horsepower potential of 217 horsepower, we're actually down on power for testing. Here is our drive plate that's splined and keyed onto that shaft. Our swing arm actually lives here. And this is the pulley for our belt. So our drive is outboard. Here's our drive belt. Now we have fully enclosed the belt for two reasons. Both to extend the life of the belt so that it's virtually the life of the motorcycle and to protect our rider from anything that may happen with the belt. If you notice, the rear drive, here's our rear sprocket, bolts onto another drive plate, and then an identical shaft. So we don't technically have a rear axle on this motorcycle. We have a rear drive shaft because this shaft passes through the girder blade. Here, the bearings are actually in the blade, not in the wheel. Then it's keyed and spline into the spline push drive, which then drives the rear hub through drive pins. Our tires for this project are the new uh, Dunlop K180s. This is a 19 inch DOT rated tire, 140 in the rear, 130 in the front. This wheel and tire package should give us a really nice, light, vintage motorcycle feel. So I'd like to have, you know, for you all to have a look at how balanced the suspension is. Here, have a look. So my name is Michael Walshaw. I'm a 6'2 motorcycle rider, weigh around 180 pounds, over 34 inch NC. And this is how the bike fits me without any modification. 